A Tale of Two Bullocks by Munshi Premchand. Munshi Premchand lived from the year 1880 to 1936. He is one of the best known writers in the Hindi language. His stories explore the lives of the poor and the ordinary with deep understanding and sensitivity. Some of his best known stories are A Winter Night and Itka. Many of his stories have been made into films including Shatranj Ke Khiladi and Satgati. Juri the vegetable farmer had two bullocks named Hira and Moti. Both were of fine pachai stock, of great stature, beautiful and hard working. The two had lived together for a very long time and become sworn brothers. They would speak to each other in their silent language. They would express their love by licking and sniffing one another. Sometimes they would even lock horns, not from hostility, but rather out of friendship and a sense of fun, the way close friends slap and pummel one another. When they were released from the yoke after their day's work at noon or in the evening, they would lick and nuzzle one another to ease their fatigue. When the oilseed cake and straw was tossed into the manger, they would stand up, thrust their muzzles into the trough together and sit down side by side to eat. Once, Juri sent the pair to his father-in-laws. The bullocks assumed that the master had sold them. They wanted to ask Juri, Why are you throwing us out? We've done everything possible to serve you well. We ate whatever you gave us without complaint. If you had to, you could have made us work harder. Why did you sell us to this tyrant? The two bullocks reached their new house in the evening, hungry after a whole day without food. But neither so much as stuck his mouth in the trough of food. Their hearts were heavy. They glanced at one another, deciding something in their mute language, and lay down. At night, they pulled hard, broke their tether, and set out for home. When Juri got up early in the morning, he saw his two bullocks standing at the trough, half a tether dangling from each of their necks. Instead of being angry, he was overwhelmed with affection for them. He ran and threw his arms around their necks, and very pleasant was the spectacle of that loving embrace. Then Juri's wife got sight of them. She said angrily, These loafers of oxen! They ran away without even working for a day at my father's. Juri could not listen to his bullocks being slandered like this. Loafers are they? I'm sure they were not fed properly or they wouldn't have run off. Aggravated, she said. They ran away because those people won't spoil them, unlike you. These bullocks are real lazy bones. I'll give them nothing but dry straw now. At mealtime, when the bullocks put their faces in the trough, they found it insipid. No savour, no juice. How could they eat it? They began to stare toward the door. Juri said to the hired hand in charge of feeding them, Why don't you throw in a little oil seed? Oh no, the mistress will surely fire me then. The next day, Juri's brother-in-law Gaya came again and took the bullocks away. This time, he yoked them to his wagon. Moti wanted to knock the wagon into the ditch, but Hira, who was more tolerant, held him back. When they reached the house, Gaya tied them with thick ropes and threw down the same dry straw. The two bullocks had never suffered such an insult. They didn't even bother to look in the trough. The next day, Gaya yoked them to the plough, but it was as though the two of them had sworn not to lift a foot. Gaya grew tired beating them. Once, when the cruel man delivered a sharp blow on Hira's nostrils, Moti took to his heels with the plough in anger. Plowshare, rope, yoke, harness, all were smashed to pieces. But for the strong ropes around their necks, the bullocks would have escaped. Hira said to Moti in their silent tongue, It's useless to run away. Moti answered, But he was going to kill you. We'll be beaten for what we did. Gaya's coming with a couple of men carrying sticks. Moti said, Just say the word and I'll show them a little fun. No, brother. Hira cautioned, just stand still. Moti stood quietly, protesting violently in his heart. When they saw his fierce look, Gaya and his helpers decided to put off the beating, for if he had not, Moti would have struck back. At their stall, the dry straw was brought to them. They stood in silence. The people were eating dinner in the house. A young girl came out carrying two pieces of bread. 
she fed them. How could a piece of bread still their hunger? But in their hearts, they felt as though they had been fed a full meal. The girl was Bharo's daughter. Her mother was dead, and her stepmother beat her often. So she felt sorry for the bullocks. So the days took on a pattern. The two were yoked all day, took a lot of beatings, and in the evening were tied up in their shed. At night, the girl would feed them some bread. Thanks to this communion of love, though they ate only a few mouthfuls of the dry straw, they did not grow weak. One day, Moti said, "I can't stand it any longer. Tonight, we'll break the ropes and run away." At night, after the girl left, the two began to gnaw at their ropes, but the thick cord wouldn't even fit in their mouths. Suddenly, the door of the house opened, and the girl came out. The bullocks began to lick her hand. Their tails stood up while she stroked their foreheads. "I'm going to let you go," she said. "Be very quiet and run away, or these people will kill you." She untied the rope, but the two stood silently conferring. "Well, let's go," Hira decided. "Though this girl is going to be in a lot of trouble tomorrow. Perhaps to force the bullocks to escape, the girl suddenly yelled, 'Father, come quick!'" Uncle's bullocks are running away. Gaya came rushing out of the house. The bullocks began running with him fast behind them. Gaya soon turned back to fetch some villagers. The two friends kept running straight ahead. They halted at the edge of a field. Hida said, "It appears we've lost our way. You took to your heels without thinking." Dizzy with hunger, they began browsing a pea field, stopping occasionally to listen for anyone coming. They had scarcely eaten a couple of mouthfuls when two men with sticks came running at them. Hira was on the embankment and slipped away, but Moti's feet were stuck in the soggy field. When Hira saw his comrade in trouble, he dashed back. Both were caught and tied near the village pond for a week without any food. They grew so weak that they couldn't even stand up, and their ribs stuck out. One day, someone beat a drum outside the enclosure. A crowd gathered. The two friends were brought out and inspected. There came a man who dug his fingers into the haunches of the bullocks and began to talk with the clerk. Soon, the bullocks were sold, and the friends went off with the man. They were trembling and could scarcely lift their feet, but they stumbled along for fear of being beaten. After some time, the road suddenly seemed familiar. Yes, this was the road by which Gaya had taken them away. Their pace quickened, their weariness disappeared. Here was their own meadow, the well where they had worked the pulley. Moti said, "Our house is close by." "I'm making a run for home," said Hira. "We will make it to our stalls and won't budge from there. If the man tries to stop us, I'll knock him down." Joyfully kicking up their heels like calves, the friends made off for the house. They hurtled in and stood by their stall while the man came dashing after them. Juri was sitting in his doorway, sunning himself. Surprised as he was, he ran up and embraced them. Tears of joy flowed from the two friends' eyes, and one of them licked Juri's hand. Meanwhile, the buyer came huffing up and grabbed their tethers. These are my bullocks," said Juri. "How can they be? I just bought them at an auction." "I'll bet you stole them," said Juri. "I'll go to the police station and make a complaint." "You do what you want. They are my bullocks. The proof is they came and stood at my door." In a rage, the man stepped forward to drag the bullocks away. Moti lowered his horns and charged. The man took to his heels with a bullock after him. He shouted many threats while Moti stood blocking his path like a victorious hero. Finally, he went away and Moti came back strutting. "I was afraid you'd be so angry that you would kill him," Hira told Moti later. "Nobody thinks of the life we have as being a life because we are so simple," Moti replied, munching on the oilseed cake, hay, bran and grain. Juri stood by and stroked them. At this moment, Juri's wife came out and kissed each of the bullocks on the forehead.